Hi there. Um, this is my first ever Excel training video. Um, I'm quite you, uh, new to YouTube, so I decided to create a video to show you how to connect your SQL server to an Excel workbook, and because this is a very, re uh, very powerful. Um, function to have because Excel spreadsheets although they're good um, if you're trying to store large amounts of data like beyond five ten thousand rows of data um, you'll probably notice that the Excel workbook suffers considerably with performance and that's when it becomes time to use uh, an SQL server to store most or all of your data and if you can connect the Excel workbook to the SQL server and retrieve information based on the SQL queries that makes it an extremely powerful tool and you will not only have uh, a very flexible um, Excel workbook but you'll also be able to impress your boss at work if you can create something like this so just basically I've just created a very simple Excel workbook. Got a tab for, say, uh, customers. Currently, I've only got five customers here. Just some very basic made up names with uh, male or female and various ages. And if you can see here, this is the SQL server. I've created a very basic database because it's got my database. And a simple table called dbo.customers. Now, I'm sure that some of, some of you may or may not know SQL. Um, I'll just assume that you know some of the basics, and we'll go from there. Okay. So, if I just uh, show you like a select query that shows you all the contents of the customer table, as you can see, this matches what we've got in our Excel table now if I show you what you need to do to connect the SQL to the Excel so I've inserted a module called module 1 I've named the uh, customer sheet in this fashion I always name my sheets like this with SHT and then whatever the name is just to, so that it's a lot easier to uh, refer to the sheet rather than writing out um, in longhand. Uh, for those of you who know VBA, you know what I'm talking about. So what you need to do, first of all, is to go to Tools and References. And here we've got, this won't normally be ticked. Um, you'll have to, if I untick that for a second, and try to execute this macro by pressing F8. As you can say, an ADO.BD connection uh, is not is not defined. So, in other words, you need to have the correct reference library ticked to get this to work. So, if we go down to Microsoft and then ActiveX Data Objects 6.1 library, just tick that. And then when we try to press F8 to run the macro, as you can see, it's now running. Um, so with the uh, in order to connect the Excel to SQL, what you need to do is create a, uh, an ADODB dot connection to be able to connect to your SQL database, and then you need to uh, create a, an ADODB dot record set, and also pass in an SQL statement in the form of a string. So we've declared these three variables in this fashion. As you can see the first part of this macro is just to um, basically clear out the contents of whatever we've got in that small table already uh, because if you've added new customers or something has been deleted effectively you want to refresh the data. So what we do in any macro when we refresh something we just clear out the contents of the previous results and then redo the macro. 
So if I press F8 to step into this macro and just go down line by line, as you can see, moving over that line, it removes the contents of the uh, table. And then we set a CN or connection, uh, ADO DV connection, and then set RS is a new ADO DV record set. And then we got to define our connection string to the SQL database, and it will be in this format. What you need to do is say provider equals SQL OLE DB uh, semicolon, and then the data source will be whatever you've named your computer. In my case, it's HAL 9000. I'm sure most of you recognize where that comes from. Uh, initial catalog. Uh, this is what you, the name of your database is, so in this case it's my database, as you can see, my database, and then security equals SSPI, semicolon, and enclose it with speech marks like that. Um, if you can't, I mean, well, because this is a video that you can pause and rewind, you can just go over this several times until you get the hang of it. So let's F8 and pass that line. And then SQL, this is our SQL query in the form of a string. So we say SQL is equal to, put it in speech marks, and then we're just going to say simply select star from dbo.customers, which is basically the query that we use to select all records from the customer table. Once that's done, we open a connection to the SQL database, and then we open a record set based on the SQL string, so we do rs.open and put SQL there, as you, if you hover over SQL you can see your select star dot from dva.customers string and then also what our connection string is, so we pass over that now that we've returned the contents of that record set we need to tell it where to paste it, so we're saying sheet customers which is our customer sheet range A2 which is there obviously, cell A2 and then just paste it there. Then we close our connection and make sure the connection equals nothing. So as you can see it's now returned all of those records. So just to prove to you 100% that this does work, so if we let's insert a new customer into this customer table. So let's say uh, insert into dvo.customers and it's uh, first name, last name, sex, age. So you tell uh, what columns to put in first and what values for those columns are we going to say. So let's say something like, I don't know, Dan uh jeez um uh, don't ask me where these names are coming from. I'm literally just making them up uh obviously he would be a male age let's say i don't know twenty five so if we execute that line. As you can see, one row affected, so that means it's been successful. Execute, and as you can see, the new customer, Dan McLeod, is now at the bottom of this table. So if we go back to our Excel and rerun our macro, we should now see Dan McLeod inserted into the table. And as you can see, I'm not sure why it's not left aligned. Let's just do that. As you can see, Dan McLeod has now been updated. So just uh, insert a button and assign the macro, and then call it something like uh, refresh SQL data, and put that over there. So there we go. Um, that's how to refresh the X, uh, SQL data. Now let's say actually we'll, we'll leave it there for now. Um, I was going to say let's uh, figure out how to
create a button to update the data from here but let's leave that there for now and I'll create another video. Thanks very much.